In this video I am going to talk about wireless LAN topologies. As the left figure shows, the transmitter can contact the receiver at any and all times, as long as both devices are tuned to the same frequency or channel and use the same modulation and coding scheme. That all sounds simple, except that is not really practical, because here we have only one transmitter, one receiver. This is a unidirectional communication. Okay, but in the right figure as you can see to a fully leverage wireless communication data should travel in both direction okay sometimes device a needs to send data to device b while device b would like to take a turn to send at other times and this is a bi-directional communication because the two devices are using the same channel two phrases in the preceding sentence become vitally important take a turn and send at other times as you learned in the previous videos if multiple signals are received at the same time they interfere with each other the likelihood of interference increases as the number of wireless devices grows. For example, in this figure, we have four devices tuned to the same channel and uh, what might happen if some or all of them transmit at the same time. Actually, here we can see interference from simultaneous transmissions. All this talk about waiting turns and avoiding interference should remind you if, uh, of an Ethernet LAN, where multiple hosts can share common bandwidth and a collision domain. To use the media effectively, all the hosts must operate in half duplex mode so that they avoid uh, colliding with other uh, transmissions. The side effect is that no host can transmit and receive at the same time on a, a given frequency. Actually, a wireless LAN is similar because multiple hosts can share the same channel. They also share the air time or access to the channel at any given time. Therefore, to keep everything clean, only one device should transmit at any given time. To content for use of the channel, devices based on the IEEE 8 or the 11 standard have to determine whether the channel is clear and available before transmitting anything. We will learn about this process in future videos. At the most basic level, there is no inherent organization to a wireless medium or any inherent control over the uh, number of devices that can transmit and receive frames. Any device that has a wireless network adapter can power up at any time and try to communicate. At a minimum, a wireless network should have a way to make sure that every device using a channel can support a common set of parameters, including data rates, 8.0.11 modulation types, channel widths, and so on. Beyond that, there should be a way to control which device and users are allowed to use the wireless medium and the methods that are used to secure the wireless transmission. IEEE 8.0.11 WLAN are always half duplex because transmission between stations use the same frequency. Only one station can transmit at any, uh, any, any time. Otherwise, collisions occur. To achieve full duplex mode, one station's transmission would have to occur on one frequency while it receives over a different frequency, much like full duplex Ethernet links work. Although this is certainly possible and practical, the IEEE 802.11 version 2012 standard does not permit full duplex operation. But the IEEE 802.11 AC amendment will somewhat ease that restriction in its Wave 2 implementation through the use of downstream multi-user MIMO or MU MIMO. All right, now let me to explain about the basic service set or BSS. The solution is to make every wireless service area a closed group of mobile devices that forms around a fixed device before a device can participate. It must advertise its capabilities and then be granted permission to join. The 802.11 standard calls this is a, a basic service set or BSS. At the heart of every BSS is a wireless access point or AP as you can see in this figure. The AP operates in infrastructure mode which means it offers the services that are necessary to form the infrastructure